Paul tells us that there are three heavens. In many religions, people claim that there are seven heavens, there are no twelve heavens, but the Bible says there are three heavens, and I'm going to stick with the three heavens. These three heavens affect your life a lot. And um, why, when we read the book of Genesis chapter 1, it says that in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. It's talking about the first heaven. The first heaven is where we have the clouds, the sky, where the planes fly. The second heaven is where we have the cosmic kingdom, the cosmic realm where we have the galaxies, the planets. That's the second heaven. And the third heaven is where God abides. Nobody has access to the third heaven physically. You can go it because the third heaven is more of spiritual place. So when we read the book of Genesis that in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth, it's talking about the first and the second heaven. It's not, it's not talking about where God lives. So it's important to know how these heavens affect, they really affect your life. Blessings comes from God in the third heaven. The Bible says that we are seated with Christ far above powers and principalities at the right hand of the Father where we are blessed with all spiritual blessings. Now, those blessings are spiritual, but we, we on earth, we need those blessings to be materialized, to become physical, for, for them to be actualized in our lives, for them to be visible, to be tangible in our lives. Now, blessings usually come from the, from the third heaven. They, are, they have to pass through the second heaven to the first heaven for it to be actualized on the earth. Now, the problem is the second heaven there's a lot of contention, spiritual battle in the second heaven. That's where we have the gates of time. Now, if you don't know the, the three heavens, it will be difficult for you to, to wage spiritual warfare. It is in the second heaven where we have the stars of men in the second heaven. So guys, watch this video till the end. Hello guys, thanks for watching. I'm Cleofa Swanyama, Cleo with him. And this is Christian Media, where we bring you news commentaries, Bible-based teachings, gospel music, plus many more. And if you want to donate to this ministry to support us financially, use the information on the screen. And don't forget to subscribe. Thank you. Now, as, as, as I have just said now, blessings, you know, in the third heaven. Let me start with the third heaven as we go to the... Okay, let me start from the first heaven. As we move up to the third heaven, the first heaven is where we have the clouds, where when you get a plane, you fly. That when you are inside the plane, you are in the first heaven. That is the first heaven. That's the first heaven. We can see it. It is visible. It is the sky. Now, the second heaven, that's where we have the space, the cosmic, you know, the, the galaxies, the, you know, the solar planets, the everything, every. Uh, these things, the uh, solar, these uh, scientists, the NASA guys, they have tried to explore this area. This is the second heaven. Now, this now this heaven, the second heaven, there is a lot of contention in the second heaven. And I'm coming back to the second heaven because that's where we have the gates of time. Now, the second heaven was created on the fourth day of creation where God created the sun, the moon, and the stars. And God gave them specific roles. Now let me read to you in the book of Genesis. Let me read to you the book of Genesis. Genesis chapter 1 verse 14. I say, And God said, Let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night. Are you getting me? The first role of the heavenly bodies, the sun, the moon, and the stars, number one, to divide the day from the night. Number two, let there be for signs. There are for signs. Number three, let there be for seasons. Number four, they mark days. Number five, they mark years. You understand? They mark days, they mark years, meaning they control time. And let there be for lights in the firmament of heaven to give light upon the earth, and it was so. So it was also, they also created to give light upon the earth. And God made two great lights. Listen to me clearly. The greater light to rule the day. This is the point where Christians, they don't get it. The greater light, which is the sun, to rule the day. This is why witchcraft like to use the sun. Because they know God gave it the mandate to rule the day. To govern. I'm going to explain it in my subsequent video, videos. And the lesser light to rule 
the night. That's why witches love moon. They use it to rule the night. And also they it, it also marks seasons. And he also made stars. And God set them in the firmament of the heaven. Now that's the second heaven which I'm talking about. To give light upon the earth. To rule over the day and over the night. Guys, 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 guys. And to divide the light from the darkness. And God saw it was good. Evening and morning was the first day. What was the fourth day, sorry. That's what God created on the fourth day of creation. The cosmic kingdom, the second heaven. Now, that's where we have the gates of time. Time is controlled. The sun, the moon, and the stars, they are the gates of time. Why? The earth rotates around the sun to make to cause day and night. The revolution of the earth around the sun causes seasons. They control time and seasons. Scientifically, the sun and the moon and the stars control the, 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 the times and the seasons. In the realm of the spirit, they also control times and seasons. This way you find whenever witchcraft is, is, is done or is involved, they have to engage the power of the sun because they know God gave it power to rule the day. The power to rule the day is not demonic. Read your Bible. The power which God gave the sun to rule the day is not demonic. It is Christians in their ignorance. They don't take authority over the sun. So witches are using the sun, manipulating the sun to pass curses, to, to cast spell on people and put people in bondage. It's time for you to wake up. Wake up. Now, the sec that's the second heaven. That's the second heaven. That's where we have the sun, the moon, and the stars. The sun, the moon, and the sun. They control time. They control time. Whoever controls time controls everything. Because this world is put within the parameters of time. When God created the earth, God put the earth within the parameters of time. When we go back uh, again in the book of Genesis chapter 1, we say that um, God said, let there be light. And God separated darkness from, from, from light. That was the first day. What it meant is that uh, there was the light. By that time, it, God had not made it the sun, but it, it was the light. Now, from that night, there was the earth. Now, the earth started to rotate, causing day and night. That's why the, Moses, in his own language, he said that God separated the light from the darkness. You understand? For him, you know, Moses, you know, you have to understand how Moses wrote this thing. Moses didn't have that capacity, the mental capacity to, you know, to understand everything. So he wrote everything according to his mental capacity. So that's why I actually tell mentality matters. If you don't develop your mind, you'll be limited in how you understand the things which God shows you. You understand? I'm very sure Moses saw the nine planets, but he could not comprehend what they were. You understand? And this way he showed them, but now according to his mind, is you, you, you can imagine people in those days. You, you tell somebody that uh, you know the moon, the earth is round. It would have been difficult. They didn't have that. They had not evolved. But for us, we have evolved. We have you know our mental capacities have have really we are advanced. So that we, that's why we can understand these things. But back in the days, so it was it was like it is impossible. Understand. So that's the language which Moses used that God separated light from darkness. That meant it was a rotation of the earth around the sun which causes day and night. That's what happened in the first day of creation. That means on the first day of creation, God created time. The first thing God created was time. The rotation of the earth around the sun, it was time. That's why Moses tells us that um, God separated the light from the darkness. You know, if you get, if you, re if you read it, uh, um, little, little, like, as Moses wrote it, it's like God drew a line like this. He said, now, this is darkness, this side, and this is light, this side. You understand? But now, Moses could not understand the, the scientific, uh, the, he didn't have the scientific explanation, which we have now. Now we can understand now what Moses meant. There was light and there was earth. Now, God made the earth to rotate around the light, which was later on made the sun on the fourth day. God made the earth rotate around the sun, causing day and night, creating time. The first thing God created was time. And creation took place within the perimeters of time. The Bible says, in the beginning, there was the word, and the word was with God, and the word is God. I would like to emphasize Christians to study. 
because it is ignorance which is keeping many Christians in bondage. The Bible says, you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. Now, years ago in 2018, God gave me a revelation to write three e-books. The first one is called The Star, The Mystery Behind Extreme Success. We, this book tends to teach about star. This book about the star teaches you about the star so that you can understand what does what does the Bible say concerning stars? There are a lot of erroneous teachings out there about the star. But this book gives you a biblical sound knowledge about the teaching of the star. The, uh, the secret to extreme success. In this book, you're going to learn how to make your star shine. You're going to learn secrets to unlock your destiny. Get this book. The second book is called, is called Understanding the Mystery of Times and Seasons where I teach about times and seasons and how to discern the, se the seasons and the timings which you are in. This book is powerful. It's going to unlock a lot of uh, potentials in you. And the, the last one is called Thrones. Thrones. Thrones is a very powerful book where I teach about altars, gates, and covenants. It's a very powerful book. These three combination will help you and will equip you to become a better Christian. To get this book, you get it when you donate to us an um, amount of 20 US dollars. When you donate 20 US dollars or more and you send me the email, I'll get you this book. I'll send these ebooks in these three ebooks in your email and it will bless you and your life will never be the same again. Thank you. Creation took place within the perimeters of time. That's what I say. Evening and morning was there. First day, time began to count. God put himself, God himself, he put himself within the perimeters of time. I'll, I'll talk about the, the third heaven, the second heaven. In the third heaven, there is no time. It's intended. There is no time. Why? Because there is no sun, there is no moon to that time. Light comes from God. But when it comes to the earth, there is the sun and the moon. They control time. They want time. So even God, when God was coming to earth to create the earth, the earth, God put himself within the perimeters of time. God did not break the law of time. So time is very important. Witches know these things. Hindus, Muslims know these things. But Christians, they, 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 they say, ah, Jesus has died. So they rubbish everything. You, that's why we pay a higher price. You find Christians are going from one deliverance to another. They are suffering in poverty. They say that they had a lot and not the tail, but things are still not working. Why? Because we miss out principles. The death of Jesus doesn't do away with the principles. The death of Jesus, it doesn't mean that uh, graphic, uh, the force of the law of gravity doesn't exist. It still exists because it's a principle which God put it there himself. We need to be on the same page together. We need to understand these things. This way, I'm here to teach you these things. So God created time and he put everything. So um, on the second day, God created and then he said that evening and morning was the second day. What is the story of creation? Evening and morning was the third day. Evening and morning was the fourth day. Evening and morning was the fifth day. And according to the Bible, the day began to count at 6 p.m. Not midnight. This midnight, it, it came about with the, with the Roman Empire. But even in the... Old Testament, the Sabbath began at 6 p.m. Because it, it, when it reaches 6 p.m., it's in 6 or 1, 6 or 1, that's an, another day, according to those days in the Bible. Not like for our time, it, it, it is midnight. Now, that's why the Bible said evening and morning was the first day. Are you together? Now, God created time and God created the earth within the perimeters of time. He, may, he, he did everything within the perimeters of time. God took six days. Something which would have done like this and to happen, but he took six days. He put himself within the perimeters of time. When Jesus came to earth, Jesus was put within the perimeters of time. He had to be conceived by a woman. He had to stay in the body for nine months. He had to be born, grow up, spend 30 years doing nothing. And then after 30 years, he began ministry. Time, Jesus was subjected to time. Everything, God makes everything beautiful in his time. Whoever understands the laws of time will be a master in the realm of the spirit. They could not arrest Jesus because his time had helped it come. Timings. 
Time means. Time means. Whoever controls time controls everything. That's why you find why is that witchcraft is obsessed with the, with the cosmic kingdom. They're obsessed with the stars. They're obsessed with the sun. They're obsessed with the moon. They're obsessed with the planets. Do you think they are fools? Do you think they are stupid? They are not stupid. They know the laws which operate in those things. Which laws? God put those laws there. Those laws are not demonic. They are not demonic. It's time for Christ to wake up. God did not create the moon for witchcraft. God did not create the sun for witchcraft. God did not create the stars, the galaxies, even the constellation. You know, the zodiac signs, they, they, they are true. They exist. The only thing with the, zo with the zodiac signs, we are not supposed to interpret the zodiac signs. We are not supposed to interpret, we interpret the Bible. But the zodiac signs are, are true. It is scientific proven. They are called, there are 12 constellations in the Bible. They are in the book of Job 33, 30, Job 33, 32. There. Or 38, 32. I'm, I'm not uh, actually, I can't remember the scripture. There's a word called Mazaroth. Mazaroth stands for zodiac. It's in the Bible. But we're not supposed to, you know, to interpret, oh, I don't know, my zodiac is sign or no. That's not what we do. But they do exist. They are, they are, they are, they are not, they are not make a thing. Science also proves the, the zodiac signs do exist. I've done a video about it, the truth about the zodiac signs. Go and, go and watch it. So, witchcraft, they know these things. That's why you find the devil is always has a, is, is one step ahead. You know, pressing people, in frustrating the church, in frustrating God's people because he knows how these things work. He knows how these things work. But when you tell Christians, guys, this is where the enemy is, 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 is destroying you. Learn these things so that you can have an up and they don't want. They say, ah, we don't want me, Jesus. We just, we don't want. We just want Jesus. My friend, my friend, that's not how we do these things. That's ignorance. Yes, we believe. I believe in Jesus. But now, it doesn't mean that because I believe in Jesus, I don't learn anything. I don't learn any principle. I just sleep. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. No. That's what most of your pastors are telling you. Ah, oh, don't learn those things. Just focus on Jesus. Eh. That's why the devil is every day. People are feeling the church. Oh, I need deliverance. Oh, I'm oppressed. My job is not working. The devil is squeezing you. He's using those laws to put people in power. To, you know, you know, to, to put, to put a uh, demonic conditions which will frustrate the church the church are just praying but they are praying blindly they are not praying with knowledge they are not praying with, with information when you go to war you, you need to know how to wage war the problem because we don't know how to wage war and you want to teach them they don't want they rubbish what we are telling you this is why the church is suffering today the devil is there Paul tells us, we wrestle not against what? Against flesh and blood. Wow. Paul knew this thing. I wish Paul would have explained more. But he thankful for the scripture. Ephesians 6, 12. Be strong. You know, Paul begins by telling us to be strong. When somebody tells you to be strong, that means things are not okay. Be careful. Stay alert. Be strong in the Lord and the power of his might for we wrestle not against flesh and blood uh-huh but uh, what are we wrestling uh, against number one powers powers two principalities three rulers of the dark one um of the dark place of this world number four spiritual wickedness where in the cosmic realms Spiritual weakness, where? In the heavenly realms. Spiritual weakness in the second heaven. There is a lot of demonic activities in the second. The same way we have demonic activities under the sea. Under the sea, we have demonic activities in, in, the, in the cosmic realm. Those two places, under the sea. That's where you find those guys, they went with the, uh, with the submarine to try to find the Titanic. You know, it imploded. They disappeared. There's a mystery. Down the sea, it is dark, dark, dark. It's a spiritual place. That's another kingdom. Even machines, scientists still today, they're finding it a hard time because it's a spiritual place. There are kingdoms there. It's a spiritual place. The same way in the cosmic realm, 
is a, is a spiritual realm. That there are a lot of demonic activity. Even Paul is warning us. He's telling us to put on the whole armor of God. Where we have the cosmic realms. Because why? They control time. And they know that God put the earth within the perimeters of time. As long as the sun exists, the moon exists, the stars, the stars exist, they will control time. Whoever control time, control everything. You can pray whatever you want. You can do whatever you want. But whoever control time, controls everything. That's why we have the gates of time. In the second heaven, we have the gates of time. The gates of time. Are you getting me, guys? The gates of time. So, blessings come from God. When he reaches the second heaven, they are being hijacked. They are hijacked by the enemy. As we find, oh, you are, we are waiting. Something was released 20 years ago, but it hasn't reached you. It is somewhere in the second heaven. The gates of time. It's there in the gate of time. So at the gate of time, it's being pushed further. It, it is So you find that your time for breakthrough does not come. When it reaches, the enemy pushes his father because he knows how to manipulate the sun, the moon, and the stars, which are the gates of time. So he manipulates your destiny because the unit of destiny is time. Whoever controls time controls everything. Okay, let me go to third heaven. Now, the, the third heaven is where God dwells. That's, that's why we have God, we have his angels, we have his throne, the four living creatures, the 24 elders, everything which we read in Revelation, that's the third heaven, the highest heaven where God dwells. Now, there, there is no time. There is no time, nothing like day, nothing like night. There is no time. That's where they, we have eternity. But now, even if God sends an angel from the third heaven to come to earth, that angel has to be subjected to the law of time. Angel Michael, uh, sorry, Angel Gabriel came to give the news to Mary. He, he came at a specific time. Because the moment you come to earth, you have to pass through the gates of time. You have to pass through the sun, the moon, and the stars. That's how God made it. He said, Angel Michael, Angel Gabriel came to give the, the news of the virgin birth to Mary at a specific time. So he himself Angel came, the, the angel Gabriel came from a realm of no time, but he had to be subjected to the law of time because you cannot operate on the earth without time. You have to, you do have to be within the, the millimeters of time. You can get out of time spiritually. It is possible. I, I, I'll, I'll explain it in my, in, in my other videos. You can get out of time, but after getting out of time for you to materialize or whatever you have done in the realm of the spirit, in the realm of the spirit, there's no time. But for whatever has been done in the realm of the spirit to be materialized on the earth, it has to be within time. Anything which is, is under the earth, is materialized on the earth, is subjected to time. Guys, I'm done. See you in the next video. Keep watching this video. I'm going to do a lot of teachings and God will help you in Jesus' name.